Hayes, open us in prayer, please, sir. Flip over to page number 264, 264. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5 of At the Cross, page number 264, verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. The smite I hide my blushing face while his dear cross appears. Dissolve my heart in thankfulness and melt mine eyes to tears. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my Good evening to you all. Good to see you in the house of the Lord tonight. It's a good Wednesday night number despite everything that's going on. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on right now that's, uh, that's just being prom uh, promoted to f cause fear. But we don't have to be fearful if we have faith. 
uh, we want to be prudent and we want to have some good common sense. God's not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, a power, and a sound mind. Now that sound mind means some common sense. Uh, I, we're going to be doing some changes uh, for just to exercise some common sense, all right? So listen up to what I'm going to be telling you about tonight. Uh, it it come to my heart and attention today as I was thinking about, uh, you know, the fear. And, and boy, I'm telling you, er, everywhere you turn, it's just fear, fear, fear. And the news media is having a heyday because they sell that. I mean, fear sells. And they are really propagating everything. So, no, hey, tw we had 12,000 deaths by flu. We've had less than 100 by this virus. And, uh, and you'd think, they didn't say nothing about the flu hardly at all, but they're making out like this is the end of the world. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. They're just blowing out of proportion, but we do want to uh, be prudent and careful. We do care about you and your families. So we uh, are going to do some adjusting of some things to let you know that we are uh, having you in mind. Uh, what I came to was looking at Nehemiah. If you're familiar with the book of Nehemiah, you'll find out that the enemies were out to put fear in Nehemiah. And they threatened, they said, man, we're going to get you anyway. You're just going, we're going to catch you unaware. And they constantly trying to put him to fear. Did Nehemiah succumb to that fear? No. But what he did do, he put a sword on each worker. They'd have a sword in one hand and a trial in the other. They didn't stop the work. So we don't want to stop the work of God. People are thinking about God right now. And really more than, they, than ordinary. And uh, we want to keep... We want to keep pressing on, and we're, we're going to try to keep our testimony. We're going to try our, any reasonable request. We will try to, uh, you know, to, to do if it's reasonable and, and if it's spirit, if it's uh, pleasing to God. I, I'd want to please God more than I do man. I'll be honest with you. But what we all are going to do, here's some things we're going to do uh, differently. Uh, I'm just, uh, I lost that thing, Kendra. You're going to have to get it back on. Uh, if you've seen this on Facebook, I mean, oh, Ricky's got it here. I get, it. I can get Ricky's. It'll stay up longer. I'm used to this one anyway. Okay, uh, we we're going to do a few things different, uh, Brother Rudy. I'm going to read this is on our Facebook page. If you hadn't got Facebook, uh, Brother Rudy and the Deacon Board realize this could be a very serious matter. Our goal is to keep God's people as safe as possible in His house. With that said, we will be doing some things a little different for the next few weeks. We will not be passing the offering plates from individual to individual. Uh, what that's going to involve, it, we're not going to be, uh, when the choir goes and sings, we're not going to pass the offering plate so everybody handles the offering plate. What we are going to do is have men to walk through while the choir's up in the, uh, on Sunday morning. We're going to have uh, ushers to come, and they're going to pass the plate in front of you, but you're not to touch the plate, but just drop your money in it. And then when they come back, then they can wash down here with their hands with this sanitizer solution, and we're just going to do it that way. Now, Brother Wayne, you may need to take some uh, extra precaution and counting money because money's dirty anyway. But uh, in, that's something we want to do, just a little something. So nobody really needs to get a hold of the plate and, and pass it. Another thing we want to do is, and you've already seen it, we're going to have uh, doorkeepers to where when you come up to the door, you're not going to have to touch the door. They're going to open it for you, and we're going to keep these doors open. We're going to try, probably keep the fans running, keep uh, circulation going in here is our plans. And uh, Ricky, I done lost it. And it's, okay. Oh, there it is. I got it now. Okay, okay. So that's what we're planning on doing, all right, and so we'll have doorkeepers, and, uh, and we, we, we plan on keeping these propped up so that you won't have to touch any, any door handles, all right? We've already had the church again today uh, fumigated with a uh, solution that's supposed to last and last that kills viruses. We had everything done except for the psalm books, but we're going to do the psalm books uh, this coming weekend. We're going to go through all the psalm books and redo that. So we're trying to do that. Uh, and uh, another thing uh, that we want to recommend, common sense practices that will help minimize the spreading of germs. We want to ask you not to be shaking hands or hugging necks 
uh, an elbow bump uh, suffice. And sometimes when I, I say it out of just habit, don't pay me no attention. Pay attention to what I'm telling you now. Uh, it's just like Mr. Trump said the other day, they asked him why he reached and shook somebody's hand. Well, it's just a natural reaction. So, I mean, but we've just done it so much, habits are hard to break. But uh, try, not, try to just not be shaking hands. Let's, I think we can do that. I don't think that's uh, un... And uh, use an elbow bump. Amen. That's right. Uh, practice good hygiene and washing your hands thoroughly. If you've got to cough, then you ought to put like this right there or put you in a, a handkerchief and tr hold your cough. And if you uh, feel sick or if you're fearful of catching something, stay home. No one will think any less of you nor judge you. We understand. We want people to feel free. All right, now this virus that is hitting is, uh, is the most dangerous cases is our elderly and people who have uh, other underlying medical conditions. They're the ones that's at risk, and there's not been that many people die of it, but the ones that have died have been mostly the older people or somebody that's uh, not so old that's had a other condition that's caused that. So uh, for you uh, senior saints, here's something that else we're going to do uh, for you and others. We will have up and running Sunday morning, up and running, we have a new web page for the church. All right, everybody get a pencil, a can, pen right in front of you. You can write this down on something. I'm going to give it to you. It's real simple. It's all small case letters, and they all run together. Okay, it's M-T-S-I-N-A-I-B-A-P-T-I-S-T-C-H-U-R-C-H dot net. What that is, it's Mount Sinai Baptist Church dot net. But don't put M-O-U-N-T Baptist Church or you'll get the black church in Greenville, okay? I mean, that's, there's a black church in Greenville, it's the Mount Sinai Baptist Church, and that's what their web. But ours is, is M-T-S-I-N-A-I-B-A-P-T-I-S-T, B-A-P-T-I-S-T, Baptist Church, and spell out church, dot net. Now, when you do that, it'll come on our screens and you'll see our church immediately. And it has up there, uh, has up there at the top, view live. And you can come right in. And when you hit that button, you can get right into the services. will be broadcast. Uh, whether we've got three here or 300 here, you can see it at home. And so if you haven't got means to do it, about anybody's got a smartphone or uh, almost everybody has a smartphone and, or at least uh, uh, some kind of uh, computer you get right in on that and see these services at home and so if you are uh, in some of those dangerous categories you might need to consider but I'm not going to turn anybody away from if they want to come but uh, you'll be coming at your own risk and peril uh, and we're just trying to use some common sense that's the reason we got this going to be up and running we already have Facebook and uh, through Dennis Ellenberg you can get in here on Facebook now for the service tonight but coming Sunday, you can still have the Facebook connection, plus we'll have this internet uh, uh, page connection, Mount Sinai Baptist Church, and just go in there and view live. Right at the top, just hit a button, it comes right up. And that's where that's going to be. All right, we're going to do that, all right? Uh, so that's M-T. Don't put a period after that, M-T. It's M-T-S-I-N-A-I, and you're right on through there. No period until you get at the end of church, it's dot net. Is that right, Brother Daniel? And I did it today for my first time, and just and as soon as I did, it didn't go anywhere else, but just shot up the church right the first thing. You didn't have to go through there and select different Mount Sinai's. You come right to this one. And so that's an easy enough. All right, and so we will be broadcasting our services that way in the days to come. All right, so just remember that. And we'll just, uh, I, this thing is so fluid and changing so rapidly, we're, we're trying to, uh, I don't want to, here's, here's what I want, I don't want to be full of fear, I want to have faith, but I want to have common sense. So I want to do what's right, I want to do what's, what's prudent, uh, 
I think this, uh, in the scriptures, there was, uh, remember the lepers? Well, the Lord had them put out of the, the camp. He had them quarantined. He quarantined the lepers. They had to put their hand over the mouth and cry unclean. And they were to stay separate from the people. And so, you know, the quarantine is not unscriptural. It's not that. But now here's, here's what I'm thinking. I read Psalm 91, and boy, that's a blessing to read Psalm 91. I may preach Psalm 91 Sunday, but I'm, God's able to keep all these plagues off of us if we're walking his will. But if you're not walking in his will, you ain't going to get no plague off you, friend. Uh, let me tell you this. You've got to walk in God's will, to, amen, to have his protection. Here's what I know. If there's somebody has a deadly disease and it's very contagious, and I go knowingly to that per place where they are, I am really tempting the Lord. I, th I, I don't think I'm going to have protection. But if I don't know that there is that scenario, and it's just, you know, fear-mongering like what I feel like is going on, I believe God will take care of us. I just really believe God will take care of us. That's my opinion on that. You may disagree, but that's the way I feel about it. But I do believe God's in control. I believe this thing is not out of uh, God's control. I believe... There's a lot going on we don't know, still don't know, don't even know where it originated, but it sure is uh, strange to me that the place in China where this originated has a biological weapons plant in that very city. That is something that's kind of strange to me. Well, anyway, that's neither here nor there, but uh, we're going to try to do what we can. All right, so far, the governor has not mandated us not to meet uh, over 100. If it gets to the point where it is an order, a mandate, now he's advised it, but if it gets to the point where it's an order, and we have it, Ricky's got it, we got a copy of it, what he said, it's his, he, he prefers that, he wants that, but it's not mandated. Uh, for us not to meet over 100. But if it gets to the place where they don't, they mandate us not to meet over 100, we may have a service here for part of our people and a service in the fellowship for part of our people and divide it up that way. If that comes to, we're just, we're going to stay open and try to, we're going to try to do what's right. And we, uh, your health is very interesting. We've, we spent all this money to keep people safe by hiring these deputies. Uh, it would be kind of ridiculous if we didn't try to watch out for uh, and be prudent about these, these matters. But, uh, a lot of this right now is being blown way out of proportion. I've got my own personal idea. I think it's all a farce. I think it's a th an attempt to, to uh, get Trump out any way they can. I really do. I th to wreck our economy, our economy's wrecked, man. I'm telling you what. And it's going to wreck it even worse as this thing goes on. But uh, we've just got a lot we need to pray about. I just wanted to say those things to you, all right? Uh, could I, if you, I'm going to do two other things and I hope you'll understand. I, I've been trying to seek the Lord's face and pray about what to do. Uh, Sunday school is going to be a little different. Here's what we're planning on for Sunday. And we're going to send all of these notices out to the teachers on Sunday. Uh, because uh, our Sunday school classes are so small and, and everybody's right in there just kind of packed in like the ladies class and young adults class and adult men's class. I'd like to, instead of doing that, I want to do this on Sunday. So here's what we're planning on for Sunday. I've talked with our superintendent, Brother Kenny, and he's in perfect agreement with me about it. I'd like to have the adult men's, the adult women's, and the young couples class to meet here in the auditorium so you can spread out. And we'll have a teacher from the men's class and a young adults class because I just don't like uh, women teaching men. So we'll, they'll be teaching as long as we continue having the adult uh, auditorium class. So those three classes are, until further notice, is going to be meeting in this auditorium uh, for Sunday school. All right? The young people, our uh, teen class and the junior class, I want them to meet in the fellowship hall. And all the rest of the small classes, because they are just small classes, and they're not right in there all over top of each other, they'll go ahead and meet as ordinary. So those are two changes that I feel like I, that, we ought, that would be prudent just to kind of give more room, more space. There's, uh, you know, just, and, and if there's some changes, this thing's so fluid, we'll, we'll be posting it on, we'll have it on Facebook, we'll put it on our website if there's any changes or any more than what we're saying tonight. Did I cover all that, Keith? 
said everything pretty well, Rick. Did I get everything said that needs to be said? All right. Do y'all, any of y'all have any questions about that thus far? Anybody got any questions about what I've said, just about what I've said? Really trying to pray, really trying to be prudent. I know there's a lot of this stuff, but we, we, there's so much unknown. I think it's a lot of fear-mongering. This thing will pass through here. More than likely, we'll all get it sooner or later. Uh, more than likely will. And it's, it's not much more than a common cold. But it does attack the lungs, and that gives problems about respirators. And people that really get into trouble, then they don't think they got enough respirators. And that's why the panic, I think, one of the reasons, because they don't think they have enough respirators and stuff for people who get to that point where they have to have it. Well, I don't know all the deals, but I listened to a doctor today, and uh, he did say something that encouraged me. He said, uh, when you're full of fear, it acts absolutely, and this is a medical fact, affects your immune uh, system. It affects your immune system uh, when you're full of fear. Faith is healthy. So let's operate in faith. Let's not give in to fear. Let's just walk on by faith. Now, we're going to try to take some common sense steps. I'm not trying to contradict myself. We're going to try to become, that's re, we, we're going to try to do it. Like I said, we've had this place sp- sprayed and fumigated. I've done instructed Patty in between services. She'll be coming back, wiping door handles back down with uh, a solution to, to uh, try to sanitize the best we can. You do some good uh, work on your part. Helping yourself. All right. Is there anything good coming out of this? Heard something today I liked. One thing, they closed down the abortion clinics for two weeks. There may be more folks saved out of that, amen, as a result of that than die. That's right. You say, what do you mean, folk? I'm talking about them babies they're going to kill. They folk too. Amen. All right. Another good thing. Here's a good thing. Some of y'all are going to have to spend time with your family. You're going to have to sit down and eat together. Because, hey, McDonald's line's going to be plumb to, to easily for the one in Pickens. I mean, really, you just think about that. And, and, and some of you fellas are going to maybe get a home-cooked meal. Like some good things coming up. I think it's a good thing the families should be together and spend some time together. Hey, f- hey, families, don't let this turn into a binge TV uh, my, don't don't let it turn into binge TV watching just because I ain't in school and all that. Don't let that happen. If there's ever been, and here's another thing, and, and Brother Brandon mentioned this to me. Brother Brandon said people not even him not even bringing it up, but people lost people are talking about meeting God and death. They're thinking it's a time to sow the seed. So be a witness where you are. Okay, here's another thing we're going to do because this thing is so, uh, right now, people are scared. Not us who are in faith, but people are so scared. We will postpone uh, Saturday's visitation for, for a while. We'll postpone that because, uh, you know, we were talking about going out, but we don't want to get uh, put a bad taste in them out. Well, here they're coming out here, with, and are they bringing, what are they bringing to us? And, we don't want to do that. We'll just postpone that for a little bit. But be a witness everywhere you can. Witness folk, hand out tracts. You can do that. And uh, we'll, if we started just to go ahead and just go and hang out hang, door hangers. But uh, right now everybody's just so uh, crazily scared. Uh, I don't want to uh, put a bad taste in people's mouth for the church. But we need to be a witness. We're going to have that sign working wide open. We're going to have messages on that sign. We are planning on having service Sunday and broadcasting. If you don't feel good, stay at home. If you've got a fever, stay at home. And uh, if you are one of these that are into dangerous uh, groups, you probably ought, you ought to consider staying at home and watching it on, on, on tube. Uh, YouTube or uh, we'll have it on, uh, live stream on that web page or on the Facebook, either one. So we got, we got that covered. We want to continue serving the Lord. We're not going out of business. We, we want to get down to bed. I think we need, if we ever needed to get to church, it's now. It's, it's no time to quit worshiping and seeking God. It's time to seek God. This thing's about over with. So just wanted to say all that. I didn't uh, uh, wanted to take all that time. I've taken some of the preacher's time. Yes, thank you for it. Yeah, all right. 
Okay, the other thing is, in lieu of doing all these changes, we will not have Youth Sunday as this year, uh, month. We will have Youth Sunday in the weeks to come and make it up. For those of you who've already working on your Youth Sunday messages, just hold on to them. We'll get to it down the road just a little bit. We will not have the Youth Fellowship either uh, because of these changes. All right, so that we're just trying to take some proactive uh, steps to try to keep us healthy. Out here in this open high ceiling auditorium, there's more uh, fresh air here, and, and uh, we'll try to do all we can to keep you safe and healthy. All right, so let's pray for one another. We need to pray for Lee Davis tonight. Remember to pray for him. And uh, he's still not out of the woods. Keep Brother Lee Davis in your prayers. Pray for our shut-ins. The Lord help them. Uh, we've got some people that are afraid to come out. We, we don't want to look down our nose at them, and we're not going to uh, be fuss at any of them. We're going to respect their wishes to stay home, and we're going to pray for them. And so let's pray for one Bible to wake the people up. I don't know. I couldn't tell you if this was the beginning of the end or this could be the, uh, just the dawn of revival before the end. God could take this and, and somehow or another wake us up, and I'm hoping that he'll do such as that. Prayer time, we're going to receive requests of prayer. Uh, remember, in the morning, I'll be preaching down at Lighthouse. Next week, I'll be preaching a, a Bible conference. They haven't canceled it yet. Uh, Monday through Friday, I'll be preaching every morning at 10. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, I don't see William. William, you back there? Uh, huh? Oh, okay, so, so all right. So they canceled her surgery. All right, so several surgeries have been canceled. All right. Okay, uh, special request of prayer. If you've got a special object that you, ha just a special request, make it known by lifting your hand. God knows what's in your heart, okay? All right, if you have a request that you need to speak, let's hear from you. needing a kidney transplant. So in two weeks, the sister of Morgan's donor is going to be tested for this lady in Kansas. And they're the same blood type. Um, the lady lives in Kansas, the lady's going to Charleston to be tested. They can, you don't have to be in the same state to do all of that. But um, I feel like Morgan has sort of orchestrated all of this with talking to the lady in Kansas that she just met a few weeks ago. And then the sister of the like they donated to Morgan, they've developed a good relationship. So, like I said Sunday, I think the Lord's opened the door for Morgan to be able to share a story and be a witness to some people, and possibly other people will have a second chance at life. And I pray that y'all would just pray about that matter. If, if it's not the Lord's will, still the person. I mean, she just lost her sister. This lady donated her organs. Morgan was a recipient of one, and here she is wanting to go help somebody and just lost a family member, but that takes a lot to be willing to do that. You just pray about that matter. All right, remember that in prayer. Okay. Uh, Tristan's preaching tonight at uh, Pickens Independent. I'm probably for the next little while he'll be preaching out there. Uh, remember, pray for him. I appreciate that. Uh, any other requests or prayer? Yeah, they, they're in the, uh, you know, on the front lines, and of course, you know, and then we got a lot of uh, people that are going to be hurt and being out of work and all that stuff and want to know what to do with kids and all, and we just need to pray. We need to ask God to help us to navigate through here and to be a witness and take advantage of this time of being a witness. Mr. Marona, go ahead. Okay, this little babe, all right. Remember that request, other request? 
you know, Brother, uh, Brother Landon Harris is going to preach for us here in just a few minutes, and we appreciate having him. We're going to receive our offering, uh, so we'll ask our ushers to come. And again, here's remember now, I don't want you all to pass the plates. Let the usher handle the plates. You just drop the money for our missions offerings. That's the way we'll do our offerings uh, until further notice. Uh, we'll be, they'll be handing them in front of you, all right? Okay, and so you give us unto the Lord. And uh, so we just pray the Lord to uh, get glory through all this. Rosie, I need a 20 there, honey. Dig me out a 20. I'm down to just ones here. Get. Any other requests? A prayer before we pray. Any other requests? We need to pray for the services. We need to pray for our people who are in danger, you know, like Brother Merle, Brother Harold, Sister, uh, Brother Neen, Sister Blynn, some of these older folk, uh, people who aren't healthy, brother, uh, even Brother, uh, the others who have other conditions, people who have asthma, uh, like Brother Vaughn, and others who are not real healthy. Well, let's pray God to just put a hedge about them hold this, pray God to keep them healthy. We need to pray each other, God to keep us healthy. God's able. I said God's able. Amen. Amen. All right, so you give us unto the Lord. Brother Brandon, you lead us in our prayer, please, sir. that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and shall show him my salvation. Psalms 91. Thank you, sister. Amen. I wanted to read that psalm instead of singing a song. It's time for the preaching of the Word of God. We're glad to have Brother Landon Harris with us tonight. He's going to come and bring God's message. You get your Bible out and hear this dear man of God. Good to have you. He's from Anchor Baptist Church. Glad to have you, preacher. God bless you, sir. God bless you, brother. Amen. Amen. You'll find the text tonight in the gospel according to Matthew chapter number 24 and then also in the book of Hebrews chapter number 11. I do appreciate the honor and the privilege to be here tonight. Uh, Brother Rudy is one of my heroes. He came and preached at Middle Tennessee Baptist Church, my home church, on a Thursday morning and he preached on being filled with the Holy Ghost and uh, gave me a desire to be filled with the Holy Ghost. And then last Sherathon he preached at Sherathon and uh, the Lord had been dealing with me probably about two years about moving to Anchor and when he was preaching the Lord spoke to my heart, gave me direction in my life, led my footsteps through his preaching and so I thank the Lord uh, for a man of God knows how to get alone with the Lord and uh, have something to say. Well tonight uh, the preacher here has given me a uh, 30, 40 minute limit. I've kind of cut, cut some things out of it, so I'm just going to hit it and go. So if y'all listen fast, I'll preach fast. Uh, the Bible says here, we'll look in verse number 32. Uh, if you want to stand to your feet, I don't know what y'all's uh, uh, tradition is, but uh, we'll stand for the reading of the Word of God. The Bible says here in verse number 32 of Matthew chapter number 24, <clears throat> Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only." But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be also ready." 
For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. I'm trying to preach to you tonight out of verse number 44, the beginning phrase where the Bible said, Therefore be also ready. And I want to preach tonight, are you ready for the rapture? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this night that you've given us. I thank you, Lord, for every word that's been said thus far. God, I thank you, Lord, for this dear man of God in this congregation. Father, I pray, God, tonight that you'd search our hearts. I pray, God, tonight that, Lord, you'd speak to our hearts. I pray, God, tonight, if there's one among us, Lord, that's not saved, I pray, God, tonight that, Lord, you would convict them of their sin. God, I know that you've had me under a heavy burden, God, to preach from these texts. And so, God, tonight I pray that, Lord, you'd help us. And, God, tonight I pray that, Lord, you'd give us unction and liberty. Father God, I pray that, Lord, you'd help your people tonight. Oh, God, we pray these things in the name that's above every name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, you and I live in a world that is in constant preparation. Uh, Young people go to high school to prepare for college. Folks go to college to prepare for their career. Folks go to careers to prepare to be retired. You got up this morning and you prepared yourself for this day. Uh, You prepared yourself to come to church tonight. Uh, The fact of the matter is that people go to great lengths to prepare themselves for something that they deem worthy of their preparation. Well, I want to say tonight uh, that there is a day coming in the near future. There is an event that is going to take place that surpasses anything that you could possibly imagine would be worthy of your preparation. And that is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said that the Lord himself shall ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, uh, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now this day will be a dread to the sinner but it will be a delight to the saint. For the Bible said uh, beloved now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but we know that when he shall appear we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. Yes this Jesus Christ uh, that we sing about and that we preach about and that we live for that saved our souls uh, hey that changed our lives uh, hey one of these days we are going to meet the Lord and I want to say my friend uh, during these days we ought to be looking for uh, that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ and while we know that that day is coming the Bible tells us in verse number 36 but of that day and hour knoweth no man know not the angels of heaven but my father only and so these folks to try to uh, predict a date. Uh, They're devils. They're scripturally ignorant or they simply are trying to fleece God's people for their money. Uh, But we do know from the scriptures that there are clear indications uh, that can show us uh, what the days will be like uh, when we are approaching the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in verse number 33, so likewise ye when ye shall see all these things know that it is near even after the doors. The Bible said in verse number 37, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And so I believe, my friend, uh, that there are clear indications that you and I are living in the very last days. I believe out of those indications, uh, I believe that the sinner's iniquity is one of those occasions. Uh, The Bible tells us that this, uh, the last days were as the days of Noah. Jesus Christ, or the Bible said in Genesis chapter number 6 and verse number 5, And God saw the wickedness of man uh, was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. 
In other words, when man was not doing something that was wrong, they were thinking about doing something that was wrong. The parallel New Testament verse to that is 1 Timothy 4.1 where the Bible said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now what that is saying is just as if you were to take a hot iron and put it up to your arm and burn your flesh, how it would kill the nerves and numb that part of your arm. Uh, so the Bible is saying men's conscience have been seared. Uh, that is why, my friend, uh, that a person can say that they are a woman when really they are a man. Uh, because when a man's conscience is seared, the conscience is ability to know. And when a person's conscience is seared, it makes them void of judgment. Uh, they don't know right from wrong. And we living in this reprobate society that we live in are clear indications that the coming of the Lord is very near. I want to say not only the sinner's iniquity, but I believe that the saint's indifference is an obvious uh, uh, sign that Jesus is coming soon. Uh, the Bible said about the days of Noah that they ate, they drank, uh, they married, and they gave in marriage. There's nothing wrong with those things, but they were simply living like they were all always going to live, absolutely indifferent of the soon coming judgment. Now that's what's happened to our churches. Our churches have become uh, more concerned with this world than the next world, and it has cost us the power and the presence of God. The Laodicean church had Jesus on the outside, knocking, wanting in, while on the inside they were saying, we're rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. And I want to say, my friend, uh, the indifference of the saints is a clear indication that you and I are living in the last days. But then I believe that the centerpiece of God's clock of prophecy. I believe that it is a little country over there in the Middle East about the size of New Jersey. She's in the news absolutely every day. Now there's three trees in the Bible that represent the nation of Israel. Ezekiel tells us about the vine tree. Romans tells us about the olive tree. And then in our text there is the fig tree. The Bible said in verse number 32, Now learn the parable of a fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. And so what Jesus is saying, the same way that you can tell that summer is coming uh, by a fig tree coming to life, uh, he is saying that you can know that the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is near when you see the nation of Israel come to life. Now for 19 centuries there was no such thing as the nation of Israel. But on May the 14th, 1948, the British mandate was signed and Israel became a sovereign state for the first time in 19 entire centuries. All those Jews that moved back to their homeland, uh, when they came there, uh, they were all speaking different languages and so they took Hebrew suffixes and Hebrew prefixes and they put them together and they made words for uh, things like airplane and spark plug and now every single Jew in the land of, of Israel is speaking fluent Hebrew and in the past 72 years uh, the entire world has seen the nation of Israel miraculously resurrect to life and that tells me my friend that Jesus is coming and he is coming soon and so we can see that the signs of the times are hitting on all cylinders but my question is, how scripturally can you and I be ready for the coming of the Lord? Well, I'll tell you what the Holy Ghost showed me. The Bible says in verse number 38, for as in the days that were before the flood. In other words, the last days will be just like the days that were before the flood. And so God directed my heart to three characters of scripture that lived during those days that had a testimony that they pleased God. And they're found in Hebrews chapter Chapter number 11. The first person I want to talk about tonight is in verse number 4 where the Bible said by faith Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain by which he obtained uh, witness that he was righteous God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh. And I want to say first of all if you would be ready for the rapture like Abel you must be saved. 
Now the Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse number 10, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved, for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they might believe a lie. What that Bible verse teaches us that if somebody is alive before the rapture and they have an opportunity to be saved and the Holy Ghost has dealt with their heart and the word of God has pricked them, if they, if they make it through the rapture and they do not get saved, and they're left behind, uh, that person will never, no, never have another opportunity to be saved. And so if you would be ready for the rapture, you must be saved. You remember the story of Cain and Abel. Cain brought an offering of, to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. And that is a picture of man's works. But Abel brought a first sling of the flock, a lamb. That is a picture of Christ. Now Cain had Christian parents. They'd been saved. Cain, Cain came to the right place. The Bible said he brought it to the Lord. Cain came at the right time. The Bible said he did it in process of time. Cain even made a form of a profession of faith. But the Bible said that God rejected the offering of Cain. Why? Because deep down in the heart of Cain, he was trusting in his own works. Now Abel brought a firstling of a flock, the picture of Christ. You see, when Abel brought that lamb, Abel was identifying himself with that lamb, saying that he, he was confessing that he was worthy of the death of his sins, and by killing that lamb and sacrificing that lamb, that lamb died as a substitute for Abel and for his sins. And so, my friend, from the very beginning, the Bible proclaims that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. And so I want to ask you a question tonight. Can you go back in your mind and in your life to a time and a place where you know that you know that you know that you know that you got saved by the grace of God? Do you know that you know that you know tonight uh, that you've been born again and if Jesus was to come, hey, would you be ready for the rapture? If not, I've got good news for you. The choicest of God's flock was slain, the Lord Jesus Christ. He shed his blood for your sins. He died as you and for for you and he is available uh, to save you tonight uh, and I want to say if you'll meet God at the cross uh, he'll save you to the uttermost and you'll be ready for Jesus to come again but secondly here I want to look at Enoch the Bible said in verse number five by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Enoch lived in a very wicked day, but Enoch decided that he was going to walk to the beat of a different drum. And I believe, my friend, if we're going to be ready for Jesus to come again, hey, we're going to have to live a separated life in practice. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 5 and verse number 22 that Enoch walked with God. I believe we're going to have to be separated in our preaching. Hey, the Bible said in the book of Jude chapter number or, or verse number 14 and 15, and Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these saying the Lord cometh with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on the world of the ungodly. Now that's not a very popular message today uh, but I believe that uh, only half of the story about God is being told. Uh, God's not just a God of love. Hey, God's not just a, lo a God of grace and mercy but God is a God of holiness and God is a God of righteousness and God is a just God. And I want to say, my friend, the night I got saved, I walked into the back door of a Baptist church uh, and there was a man of God preaching like fork and lightning. Uh, hey, preaching that hell was hot, judgment was sure, and the new birth was a must. A must. And I got saved by the grace of God because a man of God hey, told me the whole counsel of God. And so I want to say, my friend, we must be separated in our practice and in our preaching, but then I believe we must be separated in our purity. I want you to think about what Jude told us about Enoch's pro prophecy. The Bible t tells us that he prophesied that the Lord was coming with 10,000 of his saints. Now, Revelation 4.1, Jesus is coming back for his saints. But Revelation chapter number 19, Jesus is coming back with his saints on white horses. 
And so what Enoch saw was not Revelation 4.1, but Enoch saw all the way through the Old Testament, through the life of Christ, through the rapture and through the tribulation period, to Jesus coming back with his saints. Now, I don't know about you, but that tells me that Enoch had a mind that God could communicate with. You know, the Bible says the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And I believe that the only reason that Daniel hey, could uh, uh, interpret uh, Belshazzar's or, or Nebuchadnezzar's dream in, in Daniel chapter number two was because in Daniel chapter number one, he purposed in his heart not to defile himself uh, with the king's meat. And I'm telling you, hey, if we're going to be ready for the rapture, we have have got to be separated. Our minds have to be clear. Hey, we have got to get alone with God and get the mind of God and let God communicate with us. Amen. There's never been a day where the devils have crawled into the minds of believers like there is today. You know why I believe Jesus had to say to the believers, uh, lift up your heads for redemption draweth nigh because he knew most of them at the rapture would be staring down at a cell phone. And I'm telling you, there's a spirit that's came out of these cell phones hey, that have got a hold of the hearts of the people of God. Hey, you know I'm telling the truth. And I'm telling you, the Bible said in Luke chapter number 21, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and, and, call, and cares of this life so that day come upon you unawares. And so I believe, my friend, if we'll be ready for the rapture, hey, we've got to be separated. But then I want to talk about Noah, and I'll be through. The Bible said, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. If we're going to be ready for the rapture, thirdly, like Noah, we need to be serving God. Noah was serving God in unprecedented times. The Bible said that God warned him of things not seen as yet. Who's ever seen the sorts of things that are going on in our day to day? Who ever heard of quarantines and shutting down schools and shutting down sports and, and shutting down bo uh, borders over some sort of virus? I'm telling you, we are living in unprecedented days. But one day, just like Noah, the rain began to fall. And I'm sure that while Noah was out there building the ark and building that boat, I'm sure the society did not, did not really appreciate everything that he was doing. I'm sure they thought he was crazy as they heard the banging of the hammers and the saws and the, and the cutting down of the trees. Uh, but I guarantee you one thing, Noah didn't look crazy when the rain began to fall. And I want to say, my friend, they might think we're crazy for coming to church three times a week. They might think we're crazy for living separated and standing by a King James Bible hey, and living for the Lord. But I guarantee you one thing. Hey, when Jesus Christ comes again, we're not going to be the ones looking crazy. I guarantee you one thing. We're involved in, a, in something. We're involved in a work. Uh, hey, Noah was building something that was going to make it to the other side. Uh, and we're involved in something hey, that is going to float when the wrath of God is on this world. I'm glad, my friend, that we've got an opportunity to serve during these times. But I want to say not only was it unprecedented, but it was unaccompanied. Now, the Bible tells us that when Noah was 500 years old, that Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And if you read the Bible, Genesis chapter number seven tells us that when he was 600 years old, he went into the ark. Nowhere in that time do you find where him, Sham, and Japheth ever helped Noah do anything to build that ark. But the Bible does say in our text that he built an ark to the saving of his house. It is very possible that Noah started building this ark when his children were just little bitty boys. And so I don't believe that it's far-fetched to believe that uh, maybe at 20 years old, maybe at 30 years old, maybe at 40 years old, uh, that his son's caught on and they said, Daddy's really been serious about this thing. He's been doing this thing faithful for many, many years. Uh, hey, Sham, why don't you throw me a hammer? Let me pitch in and help. You know what Brother Rudy's been doing here for the past 40-something years, Pastor, in this church? He's been building an ark of safety. And some of you have been in this church your entire life. Some of you have been coming here for uh, many years. But finally one day you caught on. 
I believe it probably happened to Ham and Shem and Japheth. One day it just all made sense to them. The light turned on. They figured they'd jump in and get involved. Does anybody in here remember the day that the light turned on? Does anybody in here remember the day that you decided that maybe uh, what, what was going on around here was worth getting involved in? I'm sure that Brother Rudy uh, probably down through the years have thought to himself sometimes that he was laboring all by himself, uh, that he was working all by himself, uh, hey, that nobody was getting involved, but I'm looking at a church full of people tonight hey, that have picked up a hammer and picked up a saw and they've got involved in the work of God. And I want to say something tonight my friend I'm glad that even though we might be unaccompanied now hey if we just keep on preaching hey if we just keep on praying if we just keep on serving God hey your lost families might be, get, might be getting saved or your friends might get saved hey your loved ones might get saved by the grace of God and so I want to say my friend that we ought to be serving here in these last days if we would be ready for the rapture then lastly, not only was it unprecedented times, not only was it unaccompanied services, but it was undeserved. God told Noah that he was fixing a white man off the face of the earth. And then God said to Noah, but I want you to build an ark. And the Bible said in Genesis 6, 8, that Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I want to say something, my friend. If God called every one of us to scrub toilet bowls for the rest of our life, it'd be far better than what we deserve. Every single one of us ought to be in hell with our back broke, hey, begging for a drop of water, but for the grace of God. And I want to say, my friend, if you've been saved by the grace of God and Jesus was to come back tonight, hey, we'd not have to endure one second of the tribulation period. And I'm telling you something tonight, my friend. Hey, we don't deserve to be where we're at. I read the story of a young lady that went to a church service with her family and the preacher preached on Jesus is coming again. And when they got home, the mother went and sat on the sofa and the young girl grabbed a comb and went and jumped up in her mother's lap. And she looked up at her mother and she said, do you believe what that preacher preached on tonight? And she said, sure I do. She said, do you believe that Jesus could come back today like what that preacher said? And the mother said, sure I do. And the daughter handed her mother a comb and she said, would you comb my hair? I want to be my best for when Jesus comes. And I want to say here tonight, every one of us ought to have the desire in our hearts when Jesus comes to be found abiding in him, that we might have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Father, we're thankful, Lord, for the opportunity you've given us tonight. Father God, I pray the Lord you'd help these people, Lord, through the word that was preached. God, through our stammering tongue, Father God, I pray that, Lord, uh, that you'd help your people, God, and bless your people. I pray, Father God, tonight, if there's one, one among us, God, that's never been saved, I pray, God, that, Lord, you would deal with them now, God. I pray tonight would be the night that they'd come to you. Help us all, God, to be found faithful when you come. Oh, God, help us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, brother. That's preaching. Let's stand to our feet. We're singing what number? Right down the line, straight Bible doctrine preaching. Our, hey, he's coming. And we don't know. We really don't know this that's happening. What, what in the world, what this could lead to in this world. And I'm telling you what, friend, we in a day, we in a day, Hey, hey, he may be here before morning. I, I wish you would. I wish you'd just come on. I'm ready to meet him. How about you? If you aren't, if you aren't ready to meet him, if you've got things in your life that ought not be there, this old-fashioned altar's open. Now, you've heard God's man. You've heard God's message tonight. Maybe you're burdened to come pray. You may have a loved one on your heart. Boy, you'd like to see get in because this thing's about over. It's about over. You better get them in. Better get them in. We're singing. There's a great day coming, a great day coming. There's a great Make day coming an election by and by when the saints Make and sure. the sinners shall be parted right Just and left. Sure. Are you ready you can. for that day?
a bright day coming, a bright day coming. There's a bright day coming by and by. But its brightness shall only come to them that love the Lord. Are you ready for that day? day coming, but it's only going to be bright for those that are ready to meet God. Can you imagine what it's going to be like on this earth when the rapture, if, if a, just the scare of a virus, just the talk of a virus that's killed less than 100 people has got our whole nation, uh, in, I mean in turmoil, I mean just about locked down the whole outfit. Can you imagine what it's going to be like on this earth when we're missing Hey, and you talk about pandemonium. Good gracious. Hey, Jesus is coming soon. I'm glad he is, aren't you? Heavenly Father, I want to thank you tonight for the good preaching of the Word of God. What a timely message for us to realize. Lord, the soon coming of our Lord. We're living in that generation that have seen. Some of us were here. Lord, some of these dear saints of God were here. Remember, when Israel became a nation, a lot of us was around when Jerusalem was won back in the Six-Day War in 67. Lord, God, we know that you're doing something, God, special over there in Israel even now as they're preparing for the temple. Oh, God, I'm praying that you'd help us to realize how late the day is, knowing that now is the high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than it was when we first believed. God, help us to awake. God, I pray that the saints are God to be stirred. I just pray you'd help us. Now, Lord, about all of this situation with this uh, coronavirus and all this, Lord, please help your people to trust God, to stand on their faith and not give in to fear. Lord Jesus, you rose when you rebuked the wind and asked the disciples, where is your faith? God, help us to walk by faith, trust you, God. Lord, you got this thing under control. I know, Lord, it's not out of your control. Our life's in your hands. We can't add one day to our life by anything we do. Lord, we can't add one cubic to our statue by anything we worry about. It's in your hands, God. Help us to realize that. And God, I pray we'll trust you and live for you and try to make a difference. And Lord, may we be uh, sober-minded and help us, Lord, to be diligent, to use common sense because you, you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but you did give us a spirit of love and power and a sound mind. Help us to make sound des uh, decisions and, Lord, right choices and prudent uh, choices. Help us, God, to do what we can and trust you to do what we can't. And, Lord, I just pray now that you dismiss us in your love and give peace to our folk, and Lord, bless our older folk, Lord, and our people who are compromised by health, Lord, health problems. I pray, God, you just hedge them in, Lord, with your protection, and Lord, keep this junk off of them. I know you're able, Lord, and I just pray you'd bless now everyone that's come out this way tonight, and thank you again for Brother Landon. Well, thank you for the raising up this man of God. Bless him, God. Open many doors for him. Use him mightily for your glory and honor. Thank you for the privilege of being here tonight. Thank you for loving us like you did and giving yourself. Thank you, God, that we're ready to go. We don't have to worry about it. I'm glad we can lay down with peace in our heart tonight. Bless the Lord. Now go with us and keep us, Lord, and be with us on the Lord's day. Help our nation, God. We are in a mess. We sure need a spiritual awakening. And I pray this, this terrible thing, Lord, that's going on now, somehow or another, you use it, Lord, to wake your church up. And God, that we'd have a revival one more time. Grant it to be so in Jesus' name. And amen and amen. God bless you. You're at liberty and a fear of God. Do not shake hands. 
bump elbows, use that uh, hand wash and sanitize. Be here Lord's Day if you can. If you can't be, watch us online. Be preaching right here from this pulpit. Somebody. So Randy and Jennifer know, and I'll let Brent know as well. 